Alrighty, guys, we're going to watch the Wicked Inside Showcase. Here we go. I definitely remember seeing this game at some point and thinking it was somewhat interesting. I like the art style a lot right off the bat. Hey everyone, I'm Thomas. And I'm Gennady. Hi Thomas. We founded Moon Studios during the rise of independent games in 2010. All right, Moon then, Studios. There weren't all that many modern Metroidvania games out there. And so we created Ori and the Blind Forest. Okay, Ori I've heard of that game. became a huge success with gamers and critics alike. I haven't it played it, but I know of interest it. In the genre. Our next project was supposed to be something totally different because for over 20 years, we've been playing action RPGs religiously and we always dreamt of where this genre could be taken next. Okay, cool. At the same time, we felt that we could do even That's more cool. within the Metroidvania genre. I like genre. that and spider, so wow. We embarked on making Ori and the Will of the Wisps. We ultimately shipped another game that was incredibly well received and that we're deeply, deeply proud of. But we had never forgotten about our dream of creating our own action RPG. We have left our awesome. mark on the genre it. before. Uh, you know, now we hope right. to do the same for action RPGs. Our story begins 841 years after the embrace. King Harold. All right, we're going to get into some history here, guys. Succeeded by his young and untested son Magnus. Meanwhile, rumor. Right off the bat, the art style is reminding me a lot of like uh, Borderlands, but a more polished version of something similar. It just it has a very artistic feel to it. And um, yeah, I'm interested. Rumors of the return of a great plague known as the Pestilence are starting to emerge. Scary plagues. Magical Selene, a ruthless we wouldn't know anything about that. church, sees the Pestilence as a chance to prove herself. These forces converge on the backwater of Isola Sacra where rebel groups and the provincial government fight for control amid the Isle's crumbling ruins. Cool. As a Sarim, a member of an ancient sect devoted to defeating the Pestilence, you are sent on a merchant ship to investigate. En route, your ship comes under attack from a rebel group known as the Risen. All right, classic. The battle leaves the vessel battered and badly damaged. The ship stands little chance as it limps towards the shore and it is torn apart on the rocks at sea. You find yourself washed up at the shores of Isola Sacra, bruised yeah, I've got to and agree. armed, and end up caught in the midst they're, of uh, a vast political struggle. They're, set, they're creating the setting very, very well. Getting us invested in the story. Love it. And it's got a cool name. Okay, the world. Let's see what we got here. With no rest for the wicked, we decided to handcraft an entire... This literally looks like the exact starting scene of Path of Exile. It's pretty funny. The original Path of Exile, you wake up on a beach. ...a seamless world. Nothing in this game is procedurally generated. Instead of moving across a randomly generated flat plane, Throughout this showcase, you will notice that our world is dense, interactive, uses a ton of verticality, and that every inch was crafted by a designer. You'll be well served. So, no procedurally generated maps. So far, we would think that leads to less replayability. Um, that doesn't mean this game won't be good, but... I'll be interested to see what they've done with it by hand constructing every level and map. Always paying attention to your surroundings too. There are secret areas just about everywhere that usually reward you with precious items. Loot in your rest for the wicked is I love being taken off the map. Has That's their fun. Own unique experience and that every time you explore an area, you might just finally get that last gold ore or new bad legs you've been waiting for. I like treasure. We abandoned the old point and click model to move your character around. We wanted players to have ultimate control over their character. Every movement you make should feel tactile and be intentional. For that reason, we designed Wicked to be played using WASD or a controller. 
Okay, so Seda loves it because it's controller friendly. Again, I like the art style a lot of their uh, character portraits there and stuff like that. Instead of going for realism, our goal is always to create games that look like a painting come to life. Yeah, they're doing it. Painting our come to life. Our artists spent years meticulously modeling and hand painting all of Isola Sacra. Wow. You will traverse through plenty of breathtakingly beautiful environments, lit with natural day and night cycles, immersed in dynamic weather. That's really beautiful. I like that. Marky's going to really like that a lot. So we immersive. We also engineered a very special way of rendering our top-down world where you can always see so much further into the distance. Our goal was to make everything So as far, that looks really cool. If an object looks like you can climb it, then you can actually climb it. And if an object is too thin to walk over it, you might just need to balance your way across. Magnificent. That looks like a lot of fun. I want to see what the multiplayer and the like the end game looks like, or if this is more of just like a story-driven game, like RPG. That, you know, you beat and you're done. Which, if so, that's fine. Because it looks like it'll be a lot of fun. And probably relaxing, if that's the case. Combat, let's right see. from the start, we decided to create an animation-driven combat system. Which to us meant that every attack you make should be carefully considered. We wanted to bring weighty, precision-driven combat to the top-down space. So that's going to be some sort of mix between the Dark Souls combat and what we're used to in an action RPG. That's, that's cool. Combat that's inspired by several different genres from ARPGs to fighting games. In order to overcome an opponent, you need to watch out for telegraph behaviors and then punish accordingly. Awesome. Timing, awesome. Spacing, I really like how that guy fell apart too. That was cool. Important in Wicked's combat model. In the rest for the Wicked, every single weapon has its own unique moveset and stats driven by RNG. Using this dagger, I'll have a hard time breaking this enemy's shield. Let's try something different. Yeah, that combat alone looks like it's it's gonna take some time. If you time it just right, you can parry incoming attacks, allowing you to exploit an enemy's opening. Gear in the West for the Wicked comes in four different rarities. White items are common. Unlike in other ERPGs, they're not trash loot. We instead made those the most customizable. Blue items are rare. They offer only positive enchantments. Purple items are cursed. They offer very positive enchantments, but they also come with a cursed enchantment. Gold items are unique. They are specifically handcrafted by our designers and offer unique enchantments. This wow, okay, so this is reminding me a lot of crafting in Path of Exile where you could get like a base item and then like add things to it to bring it up to being a really high quality item. Like if you wanted a specific item to have specific traits, you might start with an item that looks like garbage and turn it into one of the best items in the game. Um, a very interesting crafting method, and they're utilizing some of that here. It's very cool. This rare claymore we found has an enchantment that increases my focus skin whenever I deal damage. Every weapon has a chance to drop with its own unique rune, which can then be extracted and used on other weapons. That way, players can come up with their own unique moveset. 100% official. Focus through combat. 
It is then used to perform rune attacks. Let's try one. Oh yeah, absolutely. Man, this is looking really cool. The blood, that blood is crazy but cool too. Every now and then, you might not even need to use your weapons to get rid of an enemy. Oh. Sometimes, all you need Just is a little Just throw them down the hole, okay. Okay. Every weapon you'll find in No Rest for the Wicked has its own bespoke moveset, custom made by our incredible animation department. These look like some cool other fights. Animation principles directly inform our combat design. <laughs> Layered on top of Whoa. that, enchantments that drastically impact weapon behavior and our deep rune system. All of this culminates in a weapon system that we feel is extremely fun and engaging and allows every player to create their own style of combat. When it comes to gear like armor, there is a wide range of options, each with their own design and attributes. The weight of such items even affects your movement in combat. Yeah, this is all very Souls-like inspired. If you opt in for a lighter, in my opinion, build, you can quick step out of enemy's way. Quick steps are fast and don't consume a lot of stamina. With medium weight build, your character will dodge. I'm roll. also getting some torch Those light vibes from this a little bit. Stamina. For no rest for the wicked, we designed a soft class system. Instead of locking you into a character class that you then have to adhere to for the entire playthrough, we want you to have the flexibility and freedom to play as the type of character you want to and even come up with character classes we haven't even thought of. Okay, that's really so far, cool. A lot of customizability. What like with a more melee focused build. Let's take a look at how combat changes for a mage. Yeah, let's see the magic, dude. This character build uses a two-handed stab. We have three rune specials available. Blink, Fireball, and Nova. Okay, that's cool. Fighting multiple enemies is always tricky. I feel like this when is a game right, where I will probably Nova want to play melee. Absolute blast. That Nova can be a blast. That's that's pretty funny. Each item you find to craft, being able to create any character build you can think of through our soft class system and the randomized loot, all of these systems combine to ensure each playthrough and every player's experience is never truly the same. <laughs> All right, bosses, okay. Whoa. Scary. Zombie guy. That zombie spider monster thing. I saw Whoa. a sacra is riddled with plagued enemies known as the Torn. The Torn! As you can see, this Damn, that thing is big. I mean, it really feels like vicious. Uh, Dark Souls meets our ARPG, our man. I'm gonna keep saying that. Study his moves and attack whenever we see an opening. <laughs> Like just watching this boss fight Bosses feels so much like Elden Ring or Dark Souls. No rest for the wicked. Yeah. They will punish every mistake you will make. But keep a cool head, make use of all of the skills you've learned, and you just might succeed. As you can see, No Rest for the Wicked is an intensely skill-based game. Your gear greatly influences your power in battle, but whether you die or overcome the challenge is ultimately down to your skill. Down to your skill, guys. Are you ready for the skill check? Sacrament. Okay. What's this going to be all about? Along your journey, you will come across the town of Sacrament, the capital of his Okay, it's, it's a town. It's the capital. Understood. Okay. Sacrament is a war-torn place, 
but over the course of your journey, you can help rebuild Sacrament to its former glory. Oh, ignore their gates, Sarum. Hey, likely never oh you cannot build it? Side. So maybe it's like your town, kind of? In order like to your to hub? Demonstrate that, we'll switch to a realm that's already a little more advanced. Our goal is to make Sacrament as interesting and interactive as possible. Meet about in Meriwether, tailors at your service. service. <laughs> They're together. Mary, we agreed. My name goes first. Don't pretend you don't smell it. Come have a taste. Mm. And players will be in control over how Sacrament will evolve over time. For example, after my previous expedition, I helped Fillmore rebuild his smithy. He now sells better gear and is also able to upgrade our gear to a higher level. Cool, okay, yeah, like a base or an island that you to can that customize. Effect, we and... aim to make investing That's resources cool. into Sacrament as satisfying and rewarding as investing resources into your character is. Let's take a look at another way you can make Sacrament your own. Customizable In town Sacrament, is cool. We'll be able to purchase real estate. Well, if you have the funds to afford it. <laughs> okay, a duh. Property in Sacrament can get a little bit expensive, but accumulate the riches and you can choose from a wide range of properties to suit anyone's taste. Okay, Your you know I love decorating a house and cool loot, outfits, guys. items, relax, and plan everything out for your next big run through the dangerous areas surrounding Sacrament. I just moved in here, so it's a little bit barren. Let's fix that. Out on your journey, you'll be able to collect or harvest valuable resources, which then can be used to craft new gear, furniture for your home, or even make improvements to the town itself. They're giving you a lot of reasons Catch to spend example, time in the game, big time. Eaten, of course, but certain fish scales might even make for some fine arm. Cool, fishing as well. That's well, awesome. I was on the shores of Crafting. Sakura. I collected some pine wood. Is that a thing? So now let's make use of that and make this place a little bit more cozy. Yeah, okay. Housing is incredibly cool in No Rest for the Wicked. Since you're not constrained to a grid, you can come up with some really organic looking designs. That's nice. Ooh, you guys know I'm gonna love decorating my house. Dude, is there nice, a bedroom in your in your something. dining room, dude? Who did uh, they hire to do this better. showcase, man? Well, some items oh my you can gosh. place in your house are just oh cosmetic. My gosh. Our goal is for most of them to be functional and have a gameplay purpose. With the, the whole of energy flow of the place is, is all, okay, okay, I, I can calm down now, okay. Uh, we hope uh, players will be able to find okay. and design a unique place for them to call home. That's really cool, though. Wow. <clears throat> End game. That's what we want to hear. Okay. What do we got? What do you got for us? One last thing we'd like to show you today is a system we call Alive. <laughs> Although No Rest for the Wicked features a traditional campaign, it was important to us that the Solar Sacra is very much a living, breathing world. In order to show you what that means, we're going to go to an area called Mariner's Keep. This is an area I've previously ventured through and explored. However, since my last journey through here, Nif have overrun the local area. Presenting entirely new threats for me to tackle and resources for me to scavenge. That's cool. Okay, they're refilling the old areas with new stuff. That's a fresh take. The world of No West for the Wicked is constantly changing around you. And each time you visit a region, you'll be faced with a drastically different experience. I like that. That is cool. There's some real potential to that. Is this multiplayer? Rest for the wicked. Oh, jeez. 
Oh, dude, you got wrecked. You never really know what to expect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that looks For awesome. For those of you who asked about Endgame, yes, we've got you covered. While we don't want to give away too much at this point, once you reach the Endgame, you can enter the Serum Crucible. This is where you'll have to test your map against some of the toughest enemies within the rest for the wicked. Interesting. Some sort of gauntlet or something. Our goal is and always has been to create a very different action RPG, one that will hopefully move the genre forward. We believe that Moon Studios is in an incredibly unique position to deliver on this vision. We have some of the best talent in the world united behind this. And we're not afraid to take the risks that need to be taken in order to change up the status quo. We've poured an incredible amount of blood, sweat, and tears into this project. And now we're at a point where we need your help to shape and build Wicked into the best game it can possibly be. Therefore, we'd like to invite all of you who love this genre, who grew up with it the same way we did, and who are excited to see a new take on it, to join us on this journey. And so we're happy to announce that we're going to be launching No Rest for the Wicked after all of these years into Steam all right. Early Access next month on April 18th. Early Over Access on April 18th, access, we'll okay. We'll be tweaking, patching, and balancing the game with your input. And you will also see major content updates okay, multiplayer. until we hit our 1.0 release. At which point, we're planning to release... Okay, guys, so... Huge potential. The only thing I was worried about was multiplayer. If they can continue to keep us wanting to work on our base in our town, keep us wanting to play some end game, give us a way to fight versus each other or with each other to gain cooler new rewards, there could be a lot of potential here. This looks really exciting, really promising project. Um, and I did see it at some point and was interested. So this is cool to get a full, full view of what's coming. As well. Wicked has been built from the ground up with multiplayer in mind. So the first of these major updates that we will be releasing in Early Access will be providing you with an innovative multiplayer experience, allowing you to play Wicked alongside or even against your friends. Dude, Our cool. second major content update will bring all new regions to Sakura, new enemies, narrative updates, and so much more. With story, system, and gameplay content updates to follow thereafter. Your support and feedback during this very critical part of Early Access really does Okay, guys. Well, here we are. A bunch of excitement. It looks really good. Let's hope that they can deliver because they have surely promised us a lot. It does make a difference. No Rest for the Wicked begins a new era for Moon Studios, and we are committed to this project for the long run. We're incredibly excited about what will be in No Rest for the Wicked already in day one of Early Access, and we can't wait to show you all the stuff that will follow in the months to come. Once the showcase is over, be sure to tune in to your favorite media and content creators for the hands-on impressions of No Rest for the Wicked immediately following this showcase. We can't wait to see you all on April 18th. Wow, guys. That looks really cool. Really promising. I, I, think, I think we're going to give it a try.